I've got I <laughs> I didn't have any chat, but I've got it now. What's happened? I've knocked myself out of square. Wait, wait a minute. I thought I was so prepared today, but evidently I'm not. Hang on. Oh, been one of those, one of those days, more mornings. Let me just pop that down there and get this. Whoops, wrong one. There you go. That should be in the middle of the screen now. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll see how we're going. Ah, uh, the Bowen, hi, how are you? And I'm projectless at the moment. I need to find something else to make that I don't need. A mess is a good thing. <laughs> I'm just looking at that, and according to that, I'm in the middle, but I'm, I'm not. So maybe my bench has been moved out. I don't know. Because which way? It's hard to figure it out. Cameras. I'll be with you in a tick. Because the shed is rather small compared to everything I've got in here. So I've just got to make it happen and I'll, I'll be there. No, see I'm going that way. Oh, it drives me nuts. Bob's going off about something. Let me just try this. Doesn't matter how well prepared you are for these things. No, that's going to make me even more off-centre. More off-centre than I am. Yeah, okay, now we've got to go the other way. Oh dear. Well, I hope everyone's well. I'll, I'll get around to the introductions in a minute. There we go. Let's try that. It, it, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, that's... Uh, got a little bit more to go. It's, um, it's really off-putting when you're streaming and you're looking down on the monitor I have in front of me and I'm not in the centre of the screen, it just sends me off. There you go, I'm happy now, all right, I'm happy. Hey Matthew, good day mate, where's your dad? <laughs> uh, one of the worst films, Benny, I don't have anything to build. Mate, come down here, I have got more projects than I know what to do with. I'll show you the one I'm going to do next in a minute. Uh, my workshop's really clean, which, yeah, no, you don't want to have them clean. Now, <laughs> They reckon that a tidy workshop is a tidy mind. No, tidy workshop is someone who's bored and got nothing else to do. Morning, David. Um, hello from Brazil. Welcome from Brisbane in Australia. All right, uh, where are we up to? What are we, where are we, where are we doing? Um, I'm, oh, g'day, I'm Steve. Hey, welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. And everyone from Twitch, everyone from my YouTube channel, everyone from the Carbon Tech YouTube channel, everyone from Facebook, everyone from Woodworking Masterclass. I said Twitch, didn't I? And the other platform I'm not sure of that I'm streaming to. Welcome. This is my workshop and this is part three. Hello from under the bed. I got to check. This. Is your name Sandy? Um, ah! <laughs> Noisy Sandy. Um, yeah, this is part three of a build. Uh, buh, 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 buh. What am I going? Where is it? Ah, there it is. Of the build I'm doing from Tim Hurd's book, The Native Bee Book. And. This is the one we're doing here, which has got a, uh, a bottom, a mid box, and a honey super on the top. These are for native bees. I have some, I can never remember the name of them. Cabanaris, I think they are. I get them confused with calamari, but it's all good. And um, yeah, look, that, uh, these are totally unsolicited. 
might cost him a coffee when I go around next. But yeah, Tim, you can get his book, I believe, I believe from bookshops, but also sugarbags.net is his website. And uh, he can certainly fix you up with that book. Not quite sure how much they are. I think, I think, I'm guessing, I think it's around the, the 40 odd dollar mark. But an absolute wealth of information and 30 plus years of experience has gone into that. So this is day three. On day one, we built this box and I showed you how to construct it, a uh, couple of tricks and tips when you're gluing end grain, size the end grain, that means put a, a thin layer of glue over the top and when it dries, when you put your main glue on, it's gonna adhere a lot better, make sure they're nice clean cuts. Um, I held them together with rubber bands and then I did the other three boxes. The sizes, I'm gonna, what I'll do is disseminate these videos and I'll put it together in one short video of about eight minutes duration and I will let, <coughs> excuse me, I will print the dimensions, but I'm using 25 mil or, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's a chocolate biscuit, there's nothing nasty. Uh, one inch or 25 mil thick material. I'm using Western Red Cedar. Uh, there's a lot of timbers out there you can use. I don't think the bees care. And the dimensions are 280 long and 200 wide. This box is a mid box. It's 90 mil or, I'll give you that in inches. Oh, where's, 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 oh dear, don't tell me I haven't got one. I can't give it to you in inches because I, I haven't got an instant converter type ruler. But it's got to be about 11 inches long, eight inches wide and it's gonna be about three and a half, maybe three and a three quarters high. There's two of those boxes. One is for the base. See, they're the same height. This goes on top of that. And then the super on top, again, is the same overall dimension, but it's 65 mil, which is two and a half inches, close enough two and a half inches or might be two and three quarter inches high. But that gives me an internal volume of eight litres, which is what I want. So that's what we did on day one, join the box. Yesterday, this is the mid box. We put in some brood separators and also a brood excluder. That has two functions. It stops the brood from going up into the honey super because you tape this section off. But also I've used polycarbonate. You could use uh, plywood if you don't want to see what the bees are doing or perspex or plexiglass. And eventually they'll cover that so you can't see. But for a few months, it's really exciting watching them build their brood. And then, of course, this, no, this goes on the top. And that's where all the lovely honey gets made. Um, so the bottoms are 25 mil thick. I suggest... You use plywood, and if you can't get 12 inch, 12 inch, <laughs> ah, is it lunchtime yet, Mum? If you can't get one inch thick plywood, what I did yesterday, I glued two half inch pieces of plywood together, and I've just taken them out of the uh, press, so we will fit those. Then we'll make a landing stage. We've got to put an entrance hole in and a vent hole and might put some feet on it and we'll talk about finishes. And I'll show you my next project too, which I'm gonna be. Ah, oh, your Royal Highness, you have been missed ad nauseum, personified. I'm gonna look those words up when I go up to the house. Good on you, darling, thanks, Prunella. Oh, you've made my day. Everyone's been asking about you because what are you on? Are you on, yon, 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 yon. Oh, you're on, you're on Facey, because I've gone back onto Twitch and people are asking about you. All you've got to do is find out where Danny is and that'd be awesome. Okay, let me have a chin whack. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Father and sons chat over the internet. <laughs> oh, dear. Akaria! Oh, that's good. Thanks for that. Pleased you're enjoying it. 
I enjoy it too. As you can tell. Good day, Chad. Welcome aboard. Darren, how are you angry? I'm going to call you. <laughs> I get all confused, so I'll call you Darren. Hey, man. Hey, did you finish your house? Did you finish the house? Panda. Oh, nice and early. That makes up for you leaving early yesterday. G'day, Ray. And all the people over in WA. No, no, we're not going to go down. No, no. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, when the first lockdown occurred back in, I think it was March last year, I didn't think it was going to last for as long as it did. And I said, look, I'm bored. And some of you people are too, so I'm just going to stream every day while the lockdown's on. I lasted 57 days and then I couldn't get out of bed. <laughs> Honestly, I've looked back over those last couple of days that I was streaming. I wasn't there. I was in an automaton. What is it? Automaton. Yeah, that was it. Just wind me up and point me towards the door. How long can you keep going, Steve? Mate, I'll keep going as long as I keep breathing. And I'll keep breathing as long as I need to keep going. So there you go. Good morning, Maxwell. How is the broom man of Victoria? Yeah, Bob's going, well, I thought he was going to come down here, but he scoffed me breakfast and then went back to the house because I think he thought food was up there. Sue was making some scones. <whistles> oh, long time I've had another stint at professional care, but I'm home again. This is what you need. Do you need us, Prunella? Because one of two things, everybody loves you here. It's a hard energy to you. And you can look at me and go, yeah, I might have some problems, but I'm not as bad off as that bloke. <laughs> so, nah, all love to you, darling. Lovely to back on it. And for the uninitiated, she is known as Her Royal Highness and must be addressed as such. She is the queen of the moderators. See, look at that, Prunella, everyone missed you. Yeah, I reckon I could go away. No one would miss me. <laughs> Amanda! Not Gary's cousin, her daughter. Well, I, I friended you too. I hope you got that. Thank you so much for the request. Um. <laughs> Julian's on it. <laughs> you just have to come to Australia, my dear. The Craftsman Studio, I haven't, but I'm under a new... No, I haven't, but I'm under a new name. Oh, that's right. No, sorry. <laughs> Darren. Ah, oh, give me a head spin. I do that. I've got two sons here at the moment. Third one's coming tomorrow or Friday. Two grandkids and two dogs. You reckon I don't get confused calling out names? And hey, you doesn't work because no one answers to that. Oh, update on the camera. No, it's still not working. <laughs> He did feel bad, though. Uh, mother did it. 57 days. <laughs> Thanks, Vinny. Oh, good on you, Prunella. If you haven't got enough to share, you shouldn't tell us. Uh, yeah, and there's a, there's, there's a bit a lot of hard energy out to you from us too, darling. Okay, let's get into it. Um, on, on this... Bill, for those that have known or whatever, I'm trying to do all old school, so I'm not using power tools. This is hand tools. And boy, am I bringing some old hand tools out today. Okay. So these I glued together yesterday, as I said. If you're going to glue two lots of plywood together, just it's an idea if you key the surface both that by what I mean by that is you rough the surface up and that allows the glue to key into it nicely. Um, I did just quickly sand the insides there, which the bees are going to live in. The outside bit, we'll scuff that up when we put it together because these I'm actually going to paint. I won't be painting this live uh, for a couple of reasons. One being I'm going to use spray paint and I'm not spraying spray paint inside here. There's a couple of reasons for that. There's a good camera 
other sensitive equipment plus my lungs. So I'm not doing that, but what I will do in a few days' time when I've painted it, I'll come back and show you the update. I have had a lot of response about building these, so thank you, everyone, for your messages, your emails, your, your wishes, your good lucks, and I, I think I even got sent a kiss in there from someone, but I won't embarrass who he was. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, I'm going to do another one of these in, uh, let's see, I'll tell you when. Um, ba -da -bum. <whistles> On the 4th of March, there you go, it'll be a Saturday morning in Australia, and I'm, <laughs> on you, Billy! <laughs> I, must, I must have got you confused with Bruce Willis. No, I'm not going there. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Mate, good to have you on. I hope you are fit and well. How's the truck going? Billy's restored this old, I'm not sure it's either a Ford or a Chevy truck, and it is the most amazing purple truck I've ever seen. I reckon you'd get booked just having it parked by the side of the road. It's one of those real muscly things. We don't get those in Australia. Best we can do over here is a ute. Anyway, it's all good. <laughs> oh, dear. Vinny, question. When I was using my shielding board, I couldn't get a square finish until I flipped the piece and came in from both sides. Is this a technique issue or a deficiency in your board? Okay, uh, could be one of two things. It could be your plane's not set right and you've got the skew on the um, blade is out, so you're shaving at an angle and when you flip the board over, you shave at the same angle, which then will give you a flat surface. Um, the other thing that might be a little bit out on your fence where you're putting it up to, best bet, get something that you, you know is a known square and just put it up against the fence and have a look if there's any, any overhang and then flip it over and see if there's any overhang. That's what I could suggest there. Truck is good. Good to see, Billy. Um, so I'd, I'd give that a try. Or the other thing, oh, hang on, would that work? Yeah, the other thing which I have seen happen, I, I don't know which way you mean square, if it's square on the edge or square on the face. Because sometimes, and I'm not saying this is the case, but I have seen it. Where's the shooting board? Got to have one around here somewhere. Here, shooting board. <whistles> oh, yeah, this will do. Oh, dear. I knew, I knew I'd have one somewhere. Oh dear. Oh, I'll go to a different camera now. You watch me show off. Um, I, I've lost me thing. Where is it? There it is. We'll go there. Uh, ba -dum. Okay, if this cheek on your plane isn't square to the sole, you will have this sort of effect or that sort of effect, which will mean that the board you're shooting is not going to be square across that way. But if you're talking about square this way, then it's either this is out or this is out. One or t'other. And make sure the lateral is set square so your blade is square to the face and to the sole. Give those couple of things a try and it should be fixed. Oh. oh, I've lost my mouse. <laughs> I, you could have got flogged or beheaded for that, Matthew. <laughs> or at very, very least, she wouldn't share her ice cream. Oh, dear. G'day, Earl. G'day, BG. Oh, that's good. I hope that helped, Vinny. Uh, Lilia, are you guys talking about yowies or mockers? 
No, I had a yearly in the yard the other day. I was going to get a photograph of it, but my camera doesn't work. <laughs> Trevor, g'day, mate. How you going? I'll give you a call later. I most likely won't be today, but we'll see if we can catch up. That would be good. Um, Merwin, g'day. How are you? Lovely to have you on board. Um, I missed you, Darren. We didn't do anything whilst you were away. I, well, I don't know. See, I could tell you any size there, Lilia, and you, you wouldn't believe me because I haven't got a photograph of it. I tell you what, there was a yowie in the lounge room the other day when I whacked me little toe on the sofa. Apparently that's what little toes are for. They to go on your feet and they'll let you know if someone's moved the furniture at night time. Okay, what was I going to do? I've lost the plot. I have. We're going to do this. Okay, we're going to put the bases on. Um, and then I'll show you how to put the holes in and everything like that. So, you can just glue it on. And again, with this, look at, remember yesterday, I sort of looked at those, oh, I like the dark downwards. So I made sure that this was the top and that was the downside. Same thing here. I'm looking at this and seeing which is, this is pretty bland all the way around. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, there's, oh, okay, it's got a little bit of colour there, so I'll, I'll have that at the bottom. So that means I'm going to put this straight onto there. Now, you can either glue, if you're going to glue this, I'd strongly suggest you use a waterproof glue. I'm going to use Type Bond 3 because it will be out in the weather. This is one area where I don't particularly want to double glue. The reason being... I can put the glue around here, but I'm not sure where it's going to sit here. And you can go, shh, and it squishes all the glue inside. I've got a bucket down there. Yeah, good. <clears throat> um, now you can nail it on if you like. You can just screw it, uh, glue it, and clamp it, and leave it like that. <laughs> Thanks, Lilia. Thousands wouldn't. Oh, dear. Yeah, no, it's good, good call. Good call. <laughs> I... I told my children when they were growing up, if there's ever an argument between you and your wife, just apologise. And my son, who always fights the rules, it's here at the moment, said, but what if, it's, what if it was my fault? I said, don't care, apologise, because it was your fault. See, there you go. We learn, we, we learn. Roy, mate, long time. Oh, hard energy out to you too, my son. Thank you so much. I hope you're feeling well. And great to have you on board. That's absolutely marvellous. Hope you can hang in there. And buddy, if you get tired, go and have a zoos. Bedtime. What's this? <laughs> All right, mate. Oh, look, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll round up some dingoes and snakes when you come to visit. All right? I saw a great one on Facebook I was going to send you. And it was... Oh, there's some crocodiles at a river crossing, yeah. And it was uh, the, new, the new security guard for border patrols. I thought Billy would appreciate that. Oh, the best, mate. God bless. I'll catch you later on. <coughs> it was. It was too, BG. Yes, darling. My fault. Um, okay. So you can either glue it on and clamp it which works quite well. For added security, you can glue it and screw it, or you can nail it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do both techniques here. I'm going to screw the bottom on, and then I'll nail the top on, just to give you, you know, what you can do. <laughs> the end, uh, Bob, Bob's the best steak catcher out, Billy, I'll tell you. But he gets, he gets really annoyed. After he's killed the snake and I throw it away because he's not allowed to eat it. <laughs> but he's getting a bit old now. Okay, let's, um, oh, hang on. What we're going to do, because I'm going to nail, will I screw this one? No, I'll screw, I'll screw the one on the bottom and then I'll nail the one on the top. So what I'm going to do is draw inside there. Now I've cut these 
So they're just a little bit oversized and I'll plane them when we get on, which will be good. But by having, I would be pleased when my new bit of kit turns up. Here we go. By having um, that line joined around, I now know where to drill the holes for the screws. Because there's nothing worse than drilling the hole in the wrong place. And we'll put two there. This is really is a big overkill, but it'll make it nice and secure. So, 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 so. Let's drill away. I, I was editing this the other day. I didn't realise how much I whistled, but I don't care. Oh, happy chappy. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Let me see. Uh, oh, what's that? That might do. Okay, I'm just going to put that there so I don't drill into my bench. Not that it really should make much difference because my bench is pretty well uh, marked. Okay. Now we've got that, we do this, and we can do that, like that. Move the glue for a tick. So these screws, it doesn't matter what screw you use, I'm using, um, ba -dee -ba -dum -ba -dum. I can tell you, I'll tell you what I'm using. Oh, I think they're eights. Yep, eight by 35. Uh, so it's that eight inch and a half, and you just wanted to go into your timber a bit. I'm going to countersink these, so that will be fine. Whenever you're screwing, especially through plywood or any timber, really, just save yourself some grief. Do a pilot hole. So that's all I'm going to drill here. Is that going to fit in there? Yeah, I could have gone a size up, but it doesn't matter. Oh, will I, will I, will No, that'll do. Oh, oh. so I told you it was going old school. Didn't have cordless drills in my day. These really do, do work quite well. And now I've started this, yeah, I, I did. I wish I'd used my cordless drill, but anyway, doesn't matter. Yeah, only a couple to go. There we go. there. So I said this is overkill, you could get away with far less. <sighs> what have we got? <clears throat> now I'm going to countersink these. This is the inside, so all I'm doing here is just cleaning out the holes and getting rid of any tear out or swarf that's there. Okay. Because it won't sit nicely on the job otherwise. So now we've got this part. What I'm <coughs> what I'm <laughs> yeah. What I'm gonna do is countersink these 
so the screws will be level or just below the surface of the um, plywood so either flush or just below the surface <laughs> Daddy what's that man using? That was the original cordless drill hoping that's going to be deep enough. So now we've got those done. Make sure I've got the bottom because I want that to be the bottom and the front. So now I will get a bead of glue, a continuous bleed bead so there's no breaks in it. And that not only glues it, but creates a parasite barrier. Now, plonk that on there so we can get that line pretty, pretty good. Um, in other timbers, you go, well, we might as well do it. Sometimes it's good to just put a pilot hole, which isn't a big hole. It's just a pilot hole so the screw can get a bite in. With this Western Red Cedar, it's not really an issue. But here we go. I told you I was going to use some old tools, didn't I? <laughs> and that's the first cordless screwdriver. Let me just pop back on that a bit. Yeah. So I'll just um, this glue too. When it's dry, it's inert, which means it's food safe. So you can use it on chopping boards and the like. Oops, wrong one. Come here. Okay, I'll use that one on it, okay. Scare, I'm just having an argument with myself, it's okay. No, that's too short. That's the one I want. Okie dokie. You're right, okay. I'll, I'll use a bit and brace then. I think, I think that could be classed as the first automatic screwdriver. Do you imagine? how heavy your toolbox <coughs> would have been years ago when you look at what a, um, a cordless drill can do now and those, what are they, hammer drills or something or other? It's amazing. So as I said, this definitely is an overkill, but I would 
Le feu est éteint. Over. Secure something. Then under secure it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why these screwdrivers were so horrible. Not so much this one, because this is a Phillips head. But when you, yes, you use the cross head for slotted screws. I don't know how many times I finished a table or something was putting the last screw in and it would jump out and skitter across the job. So now I only use them where you can't see. There we go. Okay. Mm. And I've, I've just realised I forgot to press record on my cameras. So that's all good. Doesn't he matter? I'll get most of what I need then. Um, okay, so now... Get me bucket. For those of you that don't, it is always a good idea to have a bucket next to your bench. Uh, one of the very first things that I was taught because it's amazing how often. You do need water, and I think I'll move my keyboard away from that because keyboards and water don't get on very well sometimes. Oh, the water's fine, but the keyboard doesn't like it. And I'm just taking the excess glue off now because it makes it a lot easier down the track. Here we go. La -da -da. Okay. Now if you look on the inside, it's a little bit of glue has come through. So I'm just going to clean that out as well. The other thing I like um, about doing this with all the, the ones that I build, if you wet the inside, and if you remember we've got rough sawn timber on the inside, so if you actually wet the inside, the fibres stand up and, you know, the, the bees like it because it's not all that smooth. It's got a little bit of stuff for them to hang on to. All right, so we'll leave that for a bit. I'll have a chat, then we'll... Oh, I'm going to put my coffee on too. Then we'll nail the other one on with a slight difference. I'm going to... This is what I'm going to have today. That, I really enjoyed that one. That one so much. The other day, I'm going to have another one of those now. There we go. Go for it. I'll just put me brace and bit. Of, I tell you what, I used to use the brace and bit on a lot was making um, handles for planes. 
for doing the the tote because you can get a nice long drill bit in a bracing bit and put it down at an angle, which is really good. I don't need those screws anymore, so why don't I put them away before I drop them? Which is possibly a good idea. There we go. Okie dokes. Have you noticed I actually put stuff away? See, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying so hard to be good. Whoops, don't know what that was. Made the bang anyway. Ah, I've just got to check something. All good, that's no dramas. This is the super, the honey super. Do the same thing. I'll draw this and then I'll, then I will have a chin wag. Oh, and then I'll show you. My next project I'm going to do, live. Here we go. Same thing, drawing that box around there. Mark off. We won't go so mad here. Oh, so we do go there. Not that one. Um, one there. One there. One there. One there. All that coffee smells nice. One there. One there. One there, one there. Okay, so we'll put nails in this one. Where are we up? Uh, shrink! G'day, hang on, where are we up to? <laughs> Stephen! Yeah, yeah. I'll give you my phone number and tell her to ring my wife and I think she'll find a different side to that. No, you got you got choices in life and I choose to be happy. How far back am I? Am I that guy? I've left you for 12 minutes. It's great to see you're all getting in there and having a chat. Okay, I can't go all the way, Bob. Can we see Bob? If Bob comes down, you can. Um, but at the moment, he's he's up. He's really funny with Madison, my new granddaughter. Like she's you know that long, and he just he sits there, and he figures that's his job. Uh, it, it's going to look good. I, um, and then I'll show you one of mine. In fact, I'll, I'll show you one that I've had as a test piece and has been out in the backyard for about eight months now. And I've just literally, I've just thrown it on the ground and I'll let the rain hit it, the, the sun hit it, the humidity hit it. What I thought would fail has failed and actually I'll bring it in because it's a good example of what I'm talking about and why I'm using a, a plywood top. Um, but the joints, they haven't moved. So I know they were, I build mine um, vastly different to these. Externally they look the same, but the internal uh, joinery is a lot different. I heard recently that whistling is a soul releasing stress. I think that sounds reason. That'll do for me. That'll do for me. <clears throat> I like the hand drills. Yeah, it, I tell you what, on board ship it's hard, isn't it? You can't use a spirit level on, sh on board ship. You're sucking up now, Matthew. <laughs> oh dear. It depends, Shrenick, how many holes you got to drill. If I've got, I was doing um, some bee hotels the other day just out of big chunks of some Morton Bay fig that I've got. And I drilled about 200 holes. No, I wouldn't want to do that. Look, cheers. 
And just in case you're wondering, no, it is coffee, not rum and coke. And as I said, I don't know what crawls over that pencil at night time. And I don't care. Uh, Are you talking to me on, on two things, Ren? I got you before. I thought you were on YouTube. But there you go. Uh, Loza, good day, mate. Welcome to the workshop. Bye. Kranga, what is the advantage of the screwdriver you use? Just a different motion. Oh, look, honestly, they are good. I don't know if you can still buy them, actually. They're called a Yankee screwdriver. Funny story. I, um, I went to buy another one because I, I was using a Phillips head and crosscut. And to change it, you just... There you go. Well, let's... let's Get a bit of a close-up here. Where's my camera operator when I want one? Okay, there you go. Yeah, so to release it, you just pull this back. Hang on. You lock it, and then you pull that. <laughs> you meant to lock it. It's not playing the game. And this is meant to just slide back, but it's been in there for so many years. It most likely won't. And then that pulls out. But I got sick of changing them all the time, so I ended up buying two. And I went into a hardware shop in the local town where I was living, and I said, mate, you got any Yankee screwdrivers? And he said, yeah. And he came back with a normal screwdriver. I said, that's not a Yankee. He looked at it and he said, yeah, look, so it's made in the USA. <laughs> Excuse me. Boom. Um, yeah, look, the, the advantage of it is if you're, you don't have a cordless or, or whatever, and I use them particularly when I'm putting uh, table buttons on a table. If I'm underneath the table, oh, instead of throwing that, it's so easy just to go, and, yeah, they're up. But now... Uh, battery operated these things with a long screwdriver bit it takes the fun out of that but it's good to know how to use them uh, do you guys call that a screwdriver is it still a yeah yeah no it's still a yankee i don't think anyone anyone's heard of them except me now they die sell You use that type bond ultimate for, um, I would say it might have gone off and separated because this stuff, it's, it's pretty, I'll show you, but see what I do, where's, where's that thing going again, oh no, I can use this one, can't I, I'm getting used to all this, oh, There you go. That's pretty thick. So I would say it might have uh, separated. Either that or someone came in your shop and watered it down and didn't tell you. I use Type Bond 3 on uh, the beehives. When I do chopping boards though, I use Type Bond Two, because that's what I was told to use by the guys from Tight Bond down in South Australia, Andrew and the team. And I do like Tight Bond Original because it doesn't have creep and the set time is so quick. It is good. <laughs> You'll notice I'm not going to lick that pencil. Yeah, I will tomorrow, but it'll be dry by then. Oh, dear. Morning, Andy. <laughs> oh, yes, Earl, I remember the day. That would have been my famous screwdriver as well. Hey, Chewy. 
Yeah, no, they are. They're good. I like them. I've caught up with you again now, Roy. Sorry. I see. Bucket next to my bench all the time. Uh, dear. A lot of people, get, this is Chewy, a lot of people get quite hung up on the idea of cleaning glue away with water. Why? It's good. It's just water. That's it. I Look, I wet timber down. If I'm doing a, uh, a finish or something, I'll throw a couple of litres of water on it and just slosh it about until all the grain comes up. Then when I take it off and I've sanded it and I put a finish on it, I don't get any grain raising, which is good. I, okay, I'll tell you too. Matthew, go make your dad a cup of tea. And Julian, give him 10, 10 quid for it too. I'm just trying to even it up. It's just starting to rain. Oh. That's not good, Roy. It's nice to have you with us, though. I'm going to have to skip a few here. If there's a question I missed, please ask it again. Do, 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 do. Yeah, he is a very diligent. Well, it's either that or he thinks there could be food around. I don't know. Do I recommend the H&T Gordon insert tail vice? Yes, 100%. Those of you that didn't see me, that's what I was using. Not there. There. Right there. It's an H&T Gordon tail vice. I would recommend, however, getting the smaller one. There's two sizes. Um, I couldn't tell you what they were, I think. One's 100 mil and one's 200 mil. But I would recommend getting the, the smaller size one. And then you get um, these little dogs that go with it. And then you put bench dogs in your bench. And I've got holes up to here so I can just put timber in there. Screw it up. My other bench up in the wood turning shed that I had for, see, good stuff. Um, we got to catch up, Terry. I know you're not watching because you're working, but <laughs> we'll catch up one of these days. Um, yeah, the, the room for woodworking bench has also got one in. They, I'm finding them very, very handy. They still sell them, but... Uh, oh, you're talking about the Yankees there, Don. G'day, Don! Oh, you, you pick a, a brace and bit up at a garage sale for five dollars. Oh. Actually, I think, Daryl... I don't know. There you go. Barely. Well, it's worn off that one, but let's see if we go here, press that. You can actually, where is it? Here we go. This is a trick Theo taught me. You can just nearly see Yankee, you can see the Stanley, and underneath the Stanley, you can see the Y-N, Y-A-N for Yankee. So there you go. That's what, that's why they're called Yankees. I don't think it's because they're American. I think it's because they yank screws out. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, yeah, look, I agree with you there, Andy. The small ones are nicer. Benaldi, thank you. Good vibes back to you too. Two thumbs up with that. Thank you for the, the well wishes and the good energy. 
Yeah, I, I know, Julian. I, I know. Oh, there you go. Bonus. Maybe you should start stockpiling them, Don. I keep telling my wife that. Old, old stuff's better than the younger stuff. She doesn't believe me. Mm. Oh, you're a good son, Matthew. All right, Julian, now buy him a new car. <laughs> yeah, go for the 100, right? Um, the 100 millimeter one. Mate, you want some Vegemite? Oh, I'll tell you what I saw the other day. Vegemite. The, the, what do they call that stuff? The ambrosia of the gods. Um, and they actually had tubes of it. Tubes of Vegemite in my local, um, excuse me, fruit shop. So I bought it because I think twice in our life we have run out of Vegemite in the house and Sue buys the real big jars. So I thought I'll have a tube of Vegemite. As a spare. Sure enough, we ran out the other day and I went to my little safe place and squirreled out my little tube of Vegemite. And the grandkids go, where'd you find that? I go, I'm not telling you. So there you go. Mm. I'm getting close to the, to the bottom. Oh, so I did. Where's Trevor? Oh, no, Trevor would be watching Theo because Theo's doing the stream today for record power. G'day, Mike. Yeah, it's funny. Um, the other one I like, Shrinik, is uh, Promite. I don't mind Promite if you can still get it. I don't think you're allowed to take it into Greece for some reason or other. Oh, I figured that was what you meant, Wes. Okay, on with the show. All right, so now I'm going to nail this one on. I'll put that away and get that back out. Same thing, only this time when you're nailing, when you're going to drill a hole and you're nailing, you don't drill what I would call a clearance hole. Um, and what I recommend here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use bullet heads. If you can remember yesterday, <laughs> I have problems remember that. I can tell you what I did 30 years ago, but not yesterday. Um, when we put this together, I used pan head nails. So they had tops on them like that, and that's to stop it going through. What I want to do with this one, I'm going to use bullet head nails because I'm going to countersink them, put putty over the top so when I paint it, it's going to look nice and flat. So with a, um, a bullet head, you don't want the screw hole, the, the drill hole, to be as big as the nail because it'll go straight through. So this is slightly smaller than the bullet heads I'm using. It just does make it easier to nail through. And I'm drilling through plywood, which ostensibly is a lot of layers of timber plus glue. So that's why this seems to be labouring a bit. I'll just put it in reverse. Oh, here we go. And the reason that came out was I, um, I didn't have the teeth in the dog and I had a lump of glue sitting on another dog, so it wasn't held that firmly. 
but no lives were lost and everything's good. Or as I used to say in the 60s, everything's copacetic. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Okay, same thing. No, I won't do that. Um, I'll just clean off anything that's come up as a result of the drilling. So it sits nice and flush. And no, I haven't sharpened all my chisels yet. That's a job for one stage down the track. Same thing. Let's look at which is the nicest top. If you can't do that, look at grain direction, see what looks nicer. I quite like that. So this is going to be the top. So this is going to sit on there like that. Then we'll nail it on. Same thing. Run a bead of glue. Oh, me glue's, me glue's steady me. Ah, nozzle, hang on. They're, they're great idea, those nozzles, but after a while they become a pain. There we go. Let's take that off. Okay. <whistles> Another advantage of having a bucket next to the bench. Um, I don't know if you can hear the induction hot plate behind me that I've got hide glue on. That's just a matter of course for me. I come in the shed, turn the hide glue on because I never know when I'm going to want it. And it takes a while to heat up, so I've always got it on. But I wouldn't use hide glue for this because, as someone pointed out yesterday, it's not good when it gets wet. All right. So we'll position this over there like that. And again, if you wanted to, you could just clamp this and not worry about it. But we'll nail it. And I've made these a little bit oversized, so make sure you've got a little bit hanging over all the way around. Where's my nails? Oh. It's an old, old chibi's trick, or carpenter's trick. That really works. Don't understand it. I guess there is a science behind it. I don't know what it is and I don't care what it is. All I know is it works. If you're gonna nail something, these are a bit scungy nails because, well, just because they're a bit scungy nails. You can see they're a bit on the rusty, dusty side. Do this. If you've got any, rub it through your hair like that before you put it in and they will go in a lot easier. Put your first one in, make sure you square or you've got a little bit of overage over everything. And then whack another one in on a diagonal. Whereabouts, doesn't matter. <coughs> now that top's not gonna move. 
The other thing, if, if you're uh, a fan of the rock and you don't have any hair, grab a little bit of soap. Just rub the nail over the soap. Sound a bit skewy. Or a bit of a candle. Just give it a little bit of rub on there, put a bit of wax on it. And if you bend the nail like that, pull it out and throw it away. And the best way, I, I wouldn't do this if you weren't watching, I would have done something else. But the best way to get a nail out, especially on a piece of work you've been working on, instead of going Ooh, like that, because this part of the hammer will bruise your wood, get a bit of sacrificial timber underneath it, then take it out, and that way it'll leave your surface nice and clean. You could straighten that out, but I guarantee it will bend again in the same spot. And for the price of a nail in your sanity, it's really not worth it. Can't tell where I've been and where I haven't been now. Yeah. I suppose if if I put a nail in the top of another nail, I'll see a spark and then I'll know. I think we've only got two more to go. And the lucky last. Now comes the acid test. Make sure you haven't whacked any nails through on a skew. And if you have, look, it's no big deal. Just bend it in or do whatever you want. Okay, and I'm just going to take the extra glue off of there. Yeah, I, I don't know, was that Don or someone said before, people are worried about water and wood. You look, how does a tree grow? It grows with water. It's not like a teenager, it's not allergic to it. And there could be a question coming up soon relating to yesterday when I sized the end grain. Isn't the water going to get into the end grain of the wood? Well, yes, it will, but in this instance, it's no real big deal. But I'll cover that later on of why I don't particularly like this style or design. Look, it works, it's functional, there's no dramas about that. And um, as I've said before, Tim has showed me some boxes he did over 30 years ago and they're still fine. So maybe it's me just being pedantic, I don't know, but being a fine furniture maker and understanding what wood does made me get to thinking what's a better way of building them. And it's taken me I would say the best part of eight months to perfect my way of building them now. And uh, that obviously is reflect reflected in the price of them. But I can guarantee mine won't have any issues whatsoever. All right, so that's done. Now what we're gonna do is countersink those nails in just get a nail punch. Oh, if I can find one, that looks like one, that one looks like one. So we'll just countersink these.
the difference between a nail punch and a ordinary punch. And I think these are just about had their days of nail punches. Normally a nail punch has got a, a conical head on it. That's a bit of a better one. Yeah, that's a better one. Um, <clears throat> the idea being, when you hit a nail, they, let's go this way. Yeah, when you hit a nail, see that concave tip? The nail head goes into that, whereas, look, what are, this one's had it. That, I would have to regrind that just as a punch now because it's sliding off the nail. Whereas if I use this one and put it over the nail, the nail head goes in there and I get a much better contact. I don't know if I did that one or not. I might have missed one. Don't know. Oh, I did too. How slack of me. But good of me that I picked it up. Okay, now we can fill those holes up. Uh, it doesn't matter what colour putty I use because they're going to get painted anyway. Um, the, this is, this is the rough way of putting putty in. I will show you a better way, but all of this is going to get sanded anyway, so I'm not worried about how much putty I put over the place. But I will show you on that one there, a more professional way of using wood putty and it's neater and always make sure that the putty is above the timber don't sort of uh, be scungy and get it so it's dead flat because this stuff shrinks and if you've got it dead flat it means it's going to shrink so when you sand it you're still going to have a dip there Okay, I'll show you, this is, where are we, there. Okay. All right, okay. Where's the top? Go there, give me some masking tape. So you get a little bit of masking tape. Get a nail or a screwdriver or whatever. On the sticky side, push the screwdriver through and pull it back. Just like that. So you've got a hole. And then put that over the hole that you want to fill up. So it looks, looks like that. And then you can be as ugly as you like, putting the putty on. And here's the magic of it. But when you take that off, 
you just got a little bit right in the hole that you wanted. And it saves on sanding and sandpaper and everything else. So there you go. That's, that's, that's a nice way of doing it. I'll just put a bit more on there because I don't care. It's got to get sanded anyway. All right. That's done, that's done, that's done. All right. Now we've got to put a vent hole in the back of the middle box. What that's for, when it gets really, really hot, this is from my understanding, the temperature in the hive can get to a point that can kill the, kill the bees. So we put a vent hole in the back. We'll have an entrance hole down here and then a vent hole in the back of the middle. For that, I'll, I'm going to use the screwdriver gun and because I do a lot of them, I've actually got a template made up here somewhere. Here we go. And I'll use a quarter inch hole. For that I'm using um, a force and a bit. And I just put that over, make sure I've got the top. That goes on there. And then I do a starter hole. And this is the important bit. Okay, there's the starter hole. So that's at the back of the box. And that's a quarter inch hole. If you want to know, I'll actually measure how far down. I don't think it's that critical. But that's 30 mil down from the top. And then when I screw it, or finish drilling the hole, I drill it at an angle of about oh, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, upwards. So I've got it, we'll put it in the vise. There you go. And let's come back a bit. So that's the top of the box there. And I'm going to finish drilling at an angle, around 15, 20 degrees. And before I go all the way in, this is just neatness more than anything else. I hold a block of wood behind it so I don't get a huge amount of tear out. And the reason for that being at an angle, and you can see that with that block of wood on the inside, I don't know if I can get a good picture of it, but there's no splintery tear out on that hole. And the reason for the angle is if it's raining and the rain's coming in like this, it won't go in there because water is no good for the brood. So having it at an angle, if it rains, the water won't actually get in there. So that's... That one. I have seen many times, yeah, I think mine have done it out there. They'll, the bees will fill, fill the hole in if they don't want it. But at least you're giving them an option. Now the entrance hole is a half inch hole. Where's the entrancey one? Where'd, where'd I put oh, Is that it? No. Got to find out where I, where'd I put that other box. I got bee boxes all over the place. I just can't find that particular. Here it is, particular one. Okay, now again, work out where you want 
the front to be. And I think there was one, yeah. I quite like this darker colour here, so I'm going to have that as the front. And again, I've got a template, so I just put that on there. I change over to a half inch bit. Start the hole. Is it going to go? Pop it in the vise. And exactly the same. I'm going to do that at about a 15, 20 degree angle going up. Put the block of wood underneath. And there you have the hole. If you look straight on, you can see it goes up at an angle. And with that block of wood behind it, there's no splintery tear out. It's a nice clean cut. So that's how we're looking so far. Next, what we've got to do is build a landing stage for them, which we can do that now, but I'll have a chat first. Hi, how's everyone doing? I can't believe this, three days straight. Oh, it's good. It's good, I'm enjoying it. Ah, oh, where are we? I'm, I'm de-stressing my soul, Brunella. <laughs> uh, Steve, you should wash out the tight bond bottle every time. Once you finish using them, they don't clog up. Um, yeah, it's not so much the bottle, it's, it's the nozzle because I'm slack and I don't shut the nozzle every time. So, see, what did we say? My fault, I'll admit it. Mm. Oh dear. I just, so, someone said to me they were gonna come around and say good day. I was just checking the thing to see if they did. Oh. I'm gonna sit down for a little bit because my back's starting to hurt. Then I'll, then I'll get back into it, let me move. This, because we don't need that. Oh, it's, it's hopeless sitting down because I can't read it properly then. Okay, let's go. I can't go all the way back, but we'll see how we go. George! Yeah, George, it has been. I'm, I'm catching up with a lot of people that I, I haven't spoken to in years, literally. In fact, on the... Um, on Facebook this morning, you know, they, you get memories. There was one of Theo and I six years ago when we would have started uh, streaming to Twitch and the picture of him and Bob um, on a lathe. So, yeah, time flies. Oh. <laughs> uh, question. Uh, Steve, making an urn from ash, box style, box style, not circular. How would you attach a quarter inch top without, with no mechanical fittings to be seen? Um, if it's in solid timber, the only way you could do it would be the way I do my boxes. I'm a bit reluctant to show you how to do that. Um, but basically, oh, there's a couple of ways you could do it. You can get it pretty close to being flush. Uh, here we go, that's, that's a base on, where are we? Okay, that's a base and what that is is a rebate on the inside. It's the same as I used for uh, floating panels in boxes. The other way you can do it is you can still do that, but you have to figure out how to do um, a rebate that's going to allow the timber to move. Um, 
Let's see if I've got one here. I've got one here. In fact, I'll show you. I will bear with me. Play, here you go. Play I Spy for a minute. I'll go and get this one I've got out and, and I'll show you what happens if you lock in a piece of timber. Oh, now th this is disgusting, but it's disgusting for a reason because I literally have been out in the yard. I, I reckon it must be eight months. Now, see that split? That's because that's been glued to this side and that side. Okay, I will admit this has been in extreme conditions. You know, we've had 40. 2, 43 degrees heat, 80% humidity, torrential rain, and it's just been sitting on the grass, which is always wet all the time. But I just wanted to see how it works. So that's what happens there. That timber is dried out, and because it's anchored here and here or here and here, it can't do anything when it shrinks except split. The other side is, if you anchor it here and here, and you allow it to get wet, it expands. It can't go anywhere, so what it does, it just bridges up, buckles and breaks. I tried to combat it by putting some veneer between the two lying at 90 degrees, and it worked. If you're on inside like a, um, an urn would be, it won't be an issue. But I was, um, I've changed since then. But the main reason, another reason I want to show you is, if you look at those mitre joints, they have been, as I said, in extreme conditions and they have not moved one iota. So I'm very, very happy with the way I put mine together. Um, the boxes we're making, if you subjected them to that such extreme conditions, I think, you might have a problem, but in most cases they're not because they have a roof over them and they're off the ground, so they're going to be fine. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the thing. You've got to think, how can I do it so it's going to move and not get caught? Uh, and the only way really that I can do well, the other way you could do it, if you, if you didn't mind a little bit of a goal, I don't know if I've got one here, I think I, I might have given them all away. I know my son came in and pinched one the other day. Um, oh, here we go, here we go. Okie dokie. Oh, just get around to finishing these one day too. Yeah. Okay, this lid here. Because that's a floating panel. So what I've done, it's rebated into the top and I've got a profile on it which makes it level with the top but it allows for that to be under. And all you do then is you glue there and there. Don't glue anywhere else, just there and there. That'll stop the box lid from rattling but it allows it to expand and contract. I know in America you can buy little gel balls they're really small little things and you put them in there and they jam the top in, but a dab of glue is going to do the same job. So that might be worth thinking about. Okay. Where's we up to now? Oh, so I hope that helps, Chewy. If not, send me an email. Ray, if you could do the honours. Um, admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au or woodworkingmasterclass at gmail.com and I'll show you a photo of what I do. Uh, 
Swin 3, Woodworking Masterclass. How many trees do you think you've worked through in your entire lifetime? Um, I honestly don't know. I'll take you into my timber shed. I've got a couple of trees in there. Honestly don't know. I, I honestly don't know how many jobs I've done. Um, I've gone to people's places. I know I've bored some people with this story before, but it's a true story. I went to dinner at um, a friend's place years ago now. And when I walked in, there's this gorgeous, I was, gee, it was nice. Um, what would you call it? Uh, wall unit, casement, secretary, whatever, in the, the hallway. And oh, crikey, that's, that's lovely. Anyway, we're sitting here and having tea and a couple of glasses of wine. And he said, oh, he said, you see, you got pride of place. I said, no, what do you mean? He said, that cabinet on the way in. I said, yeah, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Where'd you get that? He said, you made it for me three years ago. What oh, did I? So I've had jobs that people have broken and come into repair and they told me I made it. I've got no recollection of making it at all. But anyway, there you go. Ah, oh. <laughs> yeah, small world, George. Oh, I I got that one, Swinter. I don't know. Be a few. Oh, you're going for the shortlist, Andy. You just remembered Her Highness is in the building. I'm going back 20 minutes. I'm going to skip forward really quick. So if there's a question that I've missed, please ask it again. <laughs> Junk Collector, g'day. Straighten nails is a good task. Keep the bits occupied. <laughs> I tell you. Story about my grandkids when they were really young, they're middle teens now, but I got them nailing bits of wood. They used to come in, I got their little hammers and there was a little tray of nails and they'd hammer them in the wood. And for those of you that know Ansi, he, he knocked the tray over. And he was all upset and the lips started to cry. I said, don't worry about it, mate, and I've got a magnetic broom. So I went and got this broom and we picked all the nails up and put it all in the box. And he says, oh, that was good, Papa, and picked up the nails and then did it again. We do it again. <laughs> so, your nails are good fun for kids. Ah. Is Trevor in? Oh, no, that's too cold, Prunella. I'm still reading. I, I haven't lost you. Don. Okay. I'll catch you later, mate. Thanks for dropping in. We'll catch you later. Actually, I should get a pay increase, Ray, not my wages, Doc, because, because I'm saving on materials. Oh, there is nothing wrong with record lathes. I love them. I know I might, I might change, but at the moment I just love it. I've got, uh, what's mine? Um, Coronet Herald. Hmm. You know, that was so nice. I might have another one in a minute. Um, and when, when I'm fully set up, as I explained to people the other day, with this new setup that I've got, I should be able to leave here, walk up to the wood turning shed and continue the stream. So that's exciting. I'm looking forward to doing that. Ah. Uh. You all picked up that I missed the nail. Good on ya. See you, Andy. Have a good sleep, mate. Oh, Alan, g'day, mate. Oh, 
Oh, Alan, why doesn't my camera work? I, I, <laughs> I knew I knew a photographer. I, look, it works in video, but it just doesn't take picture. I can't get it to focus. The lens will work as a zoom, but it won't focus. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> Justin, Justin, that's, 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 a, that's a good excuse. We'll let you have that one. <clears throat> no, that, no, I'm not going for 58, George. I don't know, we'll see. No, tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll, I, I'm going to go to North Theo tomorrow, so I won't be streaming tomorrow. Oh, speaking of which, I'll show you what I'm going to be doing next in a minute. <clears throat> so you can't do I Spy like you used to. I've, the, the screen I'm looking at now up here, which you can't see, which if I put the camera on it, it goes weird because it takes photographs of photographs inside the photograph and it, you know. But I've got, excuse me, I've got a preview screen. I've got what's been broadcast screen and I've got three cameras up plus um, volume control and then I'm just waiting for some more cables to come and I'm going to have another GoPro above here so you can have an overhead shot as well. Uh, any tips on cutting square with a handsaw? Yeah, we can do that. Well, we'll cut something square there, why not? Um, it's control. That's all it is. You are, Ryan, this is Ryan I'm talking to. Do you just want to cut square square or you want a ripsaw square? But we'll, we'll cut a bit square for you and I'll show you a couple of tricks. And then we'll, then we'll what's the time? Then we'll make a landing stage for the bees. And then that'll just about... Wrap it up for the day. For those of you new to woodworking, make yourself one of these. Best thing that you will ever make. Just get some scrap that's on the floor and make that. That's all it is. Two bits of wood, piece of plywood, nothing flash, nothing fancy. As you can see, this chunky old bit of plywood. It's called a bench hook. And that's what it does. It just hooks onto your bench like that. What sort of saw do you want me to use, Ryan? Japanese saw, cross-cut saw, rip saw, tenon saw, dovetail saw, don't care. Let me know. Uh, Shrink, what software do you use to manage your cameras for the stream? Do you use Streamlabs? I oh, know I'm using OBS, but I've got, um, I'm running it through an ATM Mini Pro ISO and a Stream Deck concurrently. I, I couldn't see, I looked at Streamlabs and couldn't see the difference between the two and I'm used to ABS, so yeah, it, it works fine for me. This is possibly my amateurness, but bench press. Bench press. I've got a book press over there. Now you're all having a go at me. Oh, I know. Block play. Oh, here we go. No, oh, you're playing I Spy. <laughs> Ryan, Japanese. Okay, we'll use the Japanese saw. Okie dokie. Oh. <whistles> Grab a bit of timber. Make a bit of room. We'll go there. Getting a funny noise from something. Oh, I don't know. Hang on. Really weird noise. This really weird noise. You know when you, it sounds like something's 
something's burning, like an electrical short. That's what it sounded like. And I thought, oh, no, what's happening now? Yeah, I'll show, I'll show you what it was. It's gone. Now, there it is. There it is. Um, can you see that? Big wasp. He's a big sucker, too. See if we can get in there any closer. No, that's him. That's a mud wasp. So he'd be disappointed if he, if he builds a mud nest. He won't be able to get in here until I open the shed up again. Okie dokie. I'll just set this up for a cut for Ryan. Ah, move that. So, work out how much you want to cut off. So we'll cut this bit here. Here's the, here's the big here's the big trick. You can mark it with a pencil. If you want to be accurate, put your pencil on the mark, then move your square up to the mark. But the big trick is if you get a, a pocket knife or a Stanley knife or a utility knife or a, what are they, X-Acto knife, score down the timber like that. And then depending what piece you want to keep, if you want to keep this piece or that piece, on the waist side, with a, a nice sharp chisel, just run your chisel up that knife cut, like I'm doing there. And then you end up with that. You've got a nice fence on this side and a bevel on this side. Your saw then will sit up against this edge and cut nicely. Let me just move this chair from behind me so I can do it. We use a Japanese saw which means it's going to cut on the pull. Just not a lot of pressure. Let the saw do the work. And I go from top to bottom, top to bottom and then take the middle out. When you're nearly there, just let the weight, if you look at my hands, I'm just holding that very, very lightly and slowly, there you go. And then, to double check it, get your square and you'll see that's nice and square that way and it's nice and square that way. So there you go, I hope that helped. And it's just practice, that's all it is. But if you can get in the habit of using that knife wall, you will find your um, sawing improve literally out of sight. Oh. All right, now we've just got to make this landing stage for the bees. And that'll do it. So what I'm going to use is a bit of um, 45. Just put this away. 45, you idiot. Three quarter inch by three quarter inch piece of timber. It doesn't matter what sort of timber, but I'll use the same stuff I'm making the hives out of, which is Western Red. I'll just see if I can find a bit that's close. That's close-ish. So we want this to be... Oh. Hey, mud wasp, he's, he's, he likes them lights. Hi-dee-da-da-dum, ba-dum-ba-dum. 
Spice balls, is that what they call Brenda? Get hey, welcome. Spice balls, okay. Yeah, or just dab of glue works, I reckon. Uh, did you say OBS? OSB, SOB, OBS, whatever it is. Yeah, that's it. The round thing with the Isle of Man logo in the middle of it. Oh, dear, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they can, I tell you, Lydia, they could be they could be yowie fleas. That'll give you the t sizes of the yowies. Uh, no, they don't seem to worry them. No, they, everyone's welcome in my shop. I've got a no-kill policy. Even even I mean, I've got mice in here sometimes. I've got cockroaches. If they're not here when I'm in the shop. I don't care. There's room for everybody. Oh, well, we do have nitor. We, we do have stinging bees, but not the native ones. All right, let me get... Oh, dear. Oh, hang on. I've already got some made, so I don't have to make one. Look at that. I've got one made, so I'm not going to make one. <clears throat> Unless you want to see me make one, we might do that. <laughs> oh, good, Ryan. Please, please, I was able to help you out with that. Yeah, look, I could get an elephant in, but unfortunately, Ray, I can't because I've got music stands and bonbon stands and a, and a bed. <laughs> okay. All right, look, we might make one of these. We'll just cut one up and see how we go. Close enough, good enough. This is an accuracy, Ryan. It's um, it's just expediency. Now, see, I'm going to try something a little bit different here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We might go for a, a bit of a natural-looking one. If I can find me. Excuse me. Good H and T. Trentles, if you're watching, get a mate. Don't show him the chisel, it's filthy. All right. So we'll guesstimate. 19 mils, gotta be close to that. Has to be close to that. Oh, it was a mallet. There you go. Look at that. Easy peasy. Beat sawing it. So I might keep that. We might keep that as a landing stone. We, that can go on the bottom. It could go on the front. Might have that at the front and we'll... I don't know how this is going to go. There you go. Look at that. Easy peasy. So we can use that as the landing stage. 
70 mil is a good size, so that's there. We'll just cut that off. I like that rustic look. What do you reckon, Tim, if you're watching, should I, should I do that for all of them? Ah. holes in there. You could nail these on. I um, personally prefer to screw them on only because if they get damaged then I can replace them. If you're doing, if you're going to be screwing something on like this, I know it looks nicer if you've got the screw holes lined up but it's not a good practice because if you get it in where are we <clears throat> if you get them in line with each other where are we there you go it can split the timber that's why they're offset Just put a couple of little, little counter sinks in there. Don't worry, Max, it won't go through. Pays to be agile. I'm just I'm just thrilled I can still get my leg up that high. Good night, Roy! Mate, you have a good sleep, and we hope to catch you again very, very soon. Oh. It's great to catch up with you again, mate. It really was. All right, so now we'll position that so it's... I don't know, we'll put this back in here. That can't be right. I've been going for four hours. Oh, perhaps so. Because I had the glue pot on for four hours. I'll turn it off and nearly finished. Um, and it just went off. Whoop. It should be going off now. Where's... Here we go. No, wrong ones. I use um, size six screws for these because the bees aren't all that heavy. I just don't know where they've gone. Hang on, wait a tick. before oh 
I'll find them later on. No doubt. Bear with me. Let me have a look over here. So I know I've got more than one box because every time I go and look for them, I can't find them, so I'll go and buy another box. But eventually, they will get used. I know what I can do. Because I can't find the, I want 30 mil screws. I've only got 25 mil. So, what I'll do is just rebate them down a bit. See, you can tell this is live, can't you? That fool doesn't know what he's doing. Well, you're right. Here we go. Okay. That'll do. That will do. Oh, and there's a couple of, um, I don't know if I'll get that done today or, now, oh, there we go. Oh, I'm going to use this. Now I have it so the landing stage is just below the hole. So they've got a little step that they've got to go up. I don't glue them on. I'm sure they don't care, but I'd, I'd like to make it square. So there you go. That's a little platform for them. Now a couple of quick things to do before we sign off. And you may ask why, and I wish I had the tool here so I could show you. I did have at one stage, but it's like everything else, when I want it, it goes into hiding. No. But when you separate these boxes, there's a separator that uh, Tim sells on his, his website, which is sugarbags.net. And it goes in the corner here, and then you prise up the mid box to separate the brood. So here we go. Now, if you've built it really, really well, that is a really good seal in there because the bees will seal around the inside and that's a good seal there. And sometimes it's hard to get the separating tool in to jimmy it open. So what we do to overcome that problem is with a block plane, I give it about six strokes. Just on the corner here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Same here, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now what we've done there is when that's on, you've now got
Can you see that? You've now got an area for the tool to go in and separate. So I do four on that box. Now I don't know why, but we do two at the back on the um, mid box. So it doesn't interfere with the sealing of the box, but when it comes to separating it, it makes it so much easier. And there is the B box. What I will do in the next couple of days is I will uh, plane this off so it's flush to the sides. I'll clean the top off and I'm going to put some paint on it and you'll see how it looks then. There's one other thing that you can do that I do to mine, which is, uh, it's not essential, but it, it really is a good idea. Ow! You can either use screws or I use these nylon glides and you just whack them in the corners of your box. Like that. And it keeps them off the ground, so if they are close to the ground and you get a heavy rain, they've got these little feet so the water can pass underneath there. But that basically is your basic box. The other thing that um, is a good idea, if I can find one, here you go, is you make a strap up. This is a bit of an elaborate strap that I've made, but you just make a strap up put under your box and hold it all together before the bees have had the chance to seal everything. It helps. Have I got that the right way or have I got it the wrong way? There you go. Hang on. Yeah. Okay, so you join it together like that. Pull it down tight, that way the boxes are going to stay in place, they won't move, and I've got a little carry handle. So then that's totally all sealed, and make it all lined up, and your bees have got a happy home. I'll paint that over the next couple of days and show you um, how it turned out and give you some ideas on what to do, and then... I'm going to do another one and show you how I think you can improve on that design with very, very little extra effort and no more cost in material. Ha! Ah, so, that's it. It's finished. Oh, Trevor. Oh, yeah, all right. Oh, you finished with Theo, have you? Don't worry. I'll take second best, mate. It's all right. I've got broad shoulders. How'd he go? Did he have a good stream? Ah... Uh... Oh, no, honestly, uh, junk collector, yeah, Australian bees are the size of an ant. They're really, really small. G'day, Trev. <laughs> oh, good on you, Ray. No, I haven't finished yet. I've got to paint it yet. And, and actually what I will do to that um, is, um, 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 yeah, I'll eventually put bees in that one, I think. And I'll see how it goes compared to the other ones. All right. Well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, thank you. So, oh, no, I'll show you what I'm going to do. This is going to be the next, the next project because I don't know if 
you realised or not, but I, I inherited, well, I didn't inherit, I got hold of a pool table at the right price and uh, thought I should do the right things to stop arguments around the pool table. I have got a copy of the rules. Now, let's see, here we go. Yes, yeah, so I've got a copy of the rules so that there can be no dispute unless I decide there's something wrong. And the next project is I'm going to make a frame for that. And I think we'll do that all with hand tools. Primarily, it'll be a lot of H&T Gordon stuff. They'll be doing, do some um, mouldings, make some mouldings, uh, cut some mitres, do some rebates, do some clamping, cut some glass. So that is going to be the subject of my next lot of streams. Uh, and I'll hopefully have that box finished. I won't be streaming for the next few days because I've got things on. Um, having said that, I might just pop on and say good day. But for everyone that's joined me, fantastic to get reacquainted with old um, friends. Lovely to be on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook and whatever else. I'm really enjoying it. I really like the energy and the positivity coming from the chat room. Thank you so much. It's like a, a bunch of old friends reuniting, having a reunion. So that's absolutely fantastic. Thanks to the moderators and thanks also for the participants, as I've said before, if you want to know anything or ask any questions, just email me at uh, YouTube, you idiot, at woodworkingmasterclass at gmail.com or message me. If you like what you're seeing, please hit the subscribe button and no matter what channel you're watching. And thank you too. Thank you very much. I have been remiss because I'm going through a third party chat room. I don't get to see all the cheers, the applauses, the tips and the um, wonderful payments that have been coming through. Thank you so much for those. They're greatly appreciated because they do help with the broadcasting. So that's all I'm going with that one. Uh, like the video, share it, tell your friends. And I look forward to having your company here very soon. So in the meantime, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Be kind to yourself. Look after each other. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop at the workbench again very, very soon. Till then, do what the authorities say you should do. Think of positive things, get creative and get plenty of rest. That's about it. God bless. Catch you all later on. Thank you so much for your support. Bye for now. Thank you.